Race is very much in the forefront of this presidential election. The racial identity of Kamala Harris has been questioned with Biden. Um, when he's still in the race, polling indicate that that uh, Trump is actually gaining ground with black voters. Race relations is an undercurrent, not only in politics, but also American life. Joining us today to discuss the latest polling um, in race relations in the U.S. is Scott Rasmussen, the president of RMG Research Pollster, and Alice, and the host of the Scott Rasmussen Show. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, before we talk about the poll, why did you decide to look into this issue? Was the election uh, or was it something else? Well, it's obviously an undercurrent in the election, but it's much more than that. I was reading a book by actually Martin Luther King's very last book, uh, which was Where Do We Go From Here? And he cited some polling data from 1966 that was pretty horrifying. Um, in that poll, 88% of white parents said that they would be a troubled if their child dated a black person. 80% uh, said they'd be offended if a friend or family member married a black person. So we asked those same questions. And, uh, you know, the good news is the numbers are much better today than they were. Only 16% say they would be troubled by having their child date somebody from another race. And you're right. When I was going through the numbers, they have shown a lot of progress. And, of course, you conducted this poll for Neapolitan News Service uh, survey. Let's go through some of these numbers, in fact, right here. Now, when it comes to just how people ranked race relations, 67% ranked race relations in America as either fair, good, or excellent. You can actually see the exact numbers right here on your screen. 72% um, adding another question said race relations were either much better or somewhat better than in the 1960s. And you can also see the breakdown right right here as well. Do you think when you look at these surveys, um, this is the perception of how people perceive race relations in America. Do you think that's also reflected in what we're seeing in real life? Um, in real life, yes. In the political world, not so mm -hmm. much. You know, I look at the numbers you just showed as um, being okay, not great. 29% uh, say race relations today are good or excellent. 30% say poor. Right. Uh, when we ask about have things gotten better, you know, the numbers I cited at the top of the interview say, yeah, we, we've made some progress, uh, but there is still a long way to go. Uh, one of the, the questions that always comes up around uh, when you talk about Dr. King and the civil rights movement is uh, his, question, his, his dream of people being judged by the content of their character rather than uh, the color of their skin. And we asked people, you know, where are we in that, in that dynamic these days? And 16% uh, of voters said, oh, we're already there. There are no more problems. 19% said we'll never get there. But most were in between saying we're not there yet, but we still, you know, we're making progress. Um, and I think that fits exactly where King was in this in his book by saying you can't ignore the progress that's been made, but you also can't ignore the fact that we do not have full equality in America today. Wasn't this something like, I'm trying to remember back for that question, didn't something like 27% of people said they didn't think that we'd get there in our lifetime with being judged by the content of their, uh, their character? That's correct. 23% uh, said we would get there in their lifetime, 27% said not. You know, when you ask a question like that, you got to remember, uh, people who are in their 60s or 70s are going to have a different perspective on that than somebody who's in their 20s because you just have a much longer timeline when you're younger uh, for that to happen. But again, the, the general tone is people recognize progress has been made, but they recognize we still have work to do. And, and I think, uh, you know, that's the important lesson out of this. It's good to see some of these. You know, um, you talk about how society has changed from you know, so many laws, whether it's redlining, other laws. Now so many people, obviously, we're all mixed together, living together. And you did ask a question on this, um, just regarding who do you want to live next to? And there was 69% uh, of white voters, we have this graph as well, said they would prefer to live in a mixed neighborhood. So you had the majority white and black mixed neighborhood. Then you had 79% of uh, black voters who asked the same question, and they said they would also prefer to live in a mixed neighborhood with black and white people. When you look at other aspects, you mentioned interracial dating already, but other aspects right. when it comes to having friends and, and when it comes to racial relations, integration, are you seeing the same type of trend in some of the other polling questions? Oh, absolutely. You know, back in that 1966 survey, 50% of white voters said they would be offended if a black person moved in next to them. Uh, that's down to 2% today. So we're seeing that same trend. Um, and one of the other things that we're seeing, and I think this is a, a you know, another important distinction. Um, when we asked people 
if you who does a poor white uh, person have more in common with right. is it a poor black person or a rich white person and they said look people who are poor people who are in poverty have more in common uh than people who happen to be the same race and again i think that's something important dr king spoke about the need to help lift everybody out of poverty um, and so again, we're seeing some differences here. And Angela, I got to tell you one fun thing that we're doing with this, maybe not fun, but, but perhaps revealing, is we are right now doing this same set of questions asking about people from the other political part. Oh, really? So what do you mean by that? Ask, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. Well, no, we're gonna ask people, uh, you know, if you're a Republican, would you be offended if your child was dating a Democrat? We're gonna go really? through the same sets of questions uh, we'll have that, uh, it, or I guess, early next week before we actually have that data in. Uh, but we wanted to see, you know, that partisan world has become so divisive mm -hmm. these days. We wanted to see how it stacks up compared to these questions on race relations. You know, what do you think long term? What does this poll reveal to you regarding long term um, how Americans feel about r uh, race relations, maybe in 20 years from now? People are optimistic that things will be better in 20 years. Uh, and again, you know, we've already seen people think we'll get closer to this. And it's part of a, um, a larger set of data that we have. We ask a lot of questions about America's founding ideals, freedom, equality, and self-governance. People recognize that we're not there yet. You know, we don't have liberty and justice for all in a perfect sense. But on all of these issues, there is a recognition that we're doing better today than we were at times in our past. And there's optimism. In fact, that's why I'm optimistic about America's future. Regardless of who wins this election, the American people still embrace those ideals and are, are helping us, you know, reach for them. You know, we need more optimism. Thanks for that. Yeah. And thank you so much, Scott, for joining us. To find out more information on the survey, go to NapolitanNews.org. And once again, Scott, thank you so much for joining us right here on the National News Desk. Thank you.